So there's a lot of questions about the gimbal video and uh, how the craft appears to be rotating. And what it is, it actually appears to be a glare, uh, some kind of bloom in the IR sensor uh, created by it being slightly out of focus and by the shape of the, of the optics. And it's the glare that's rotating. It's not actually a craft itself. It's probably just a distant jet that this, this glare is rotating. But how does that happen? I've kind of explained it before, but it's, uh, it's a difficult thing to actually visualize. You've got to think about how the camera is mounted. Now this is a similar uh, kind of camera configuration. Now a lot of times you'll see cameras mounted like this, especially underneath helicopters. They're mounted so that they can pivot like this and they can rotate around like this. Uh, which means that if you want to track something, you just point down at the angle that something is moving at and then you just rotate the camera around and it will track it. It's quite, quite straightforward. But with the ActFlare, uh, the type of camera that was being used in the gimbal video, the camera's mounted like this. It's mounted forward. It's facing in a forward direction, which means you can only rotate in two ways. You can rotate along the horizontal axis, and you can rotate up and down. Which means to pan from left to right, it's actually quite difficult. You, once something is pointed down, how do you pan to go to the side? You actually have to tilt the camera up and down. And that means that the image is going to rotate. So if the image is rotating, that's something you don't want. So what they do is inside the camera system, there's a thing called a derotation mechanism, which actually takes that rotation and corrects it and puts it the right way up. But the camera is rotating, which means that the glare can rotate. This is perhaps a bit easier to visualize if you look at something uh, a little, little uh, larger. Here I've done something that's got uh, a similar degrees of freedom. It's a, uh, a, a stick with a hinge, basically. So if I stick it inside these uh, two holes I've cut here, I can rotate it around the axis. This is the same essentially as being on the underneath of the jet. So this is rotating around the forward axis, and it can rotate up and down, which can also be left and right if you rotate it around that way. So if I was to track something like the edge of this table, say so something is running along here, or flying along here, and I wanted to track that motion, then if I start pointing over here and move to here, you'll see that everything has to actually rotate. This will be even clearer if I add on a stick so we can actually see the actual line of sight of the camera. I'm just going to uh, attach this here real quick. Okay, so now we've got the same set as before, but now we have this stick representing the line of sight of the camera, so this is what the camera is looking at. Now notice where the up uh, direction is on the camera. This will tell you that the horizon is going to be perpendicular to this up direction. So if we were to track something over to the side, you'll see that the camera's up direction now has to move quite a bit, which means that the camera itself has rotated, which means that internally it has to then use the derotation to get rid of that rotation. So if we're tracking something from left to right, you'll see it will move across and then it will start tilting the other way. So you get this kind of uh, swaying action. You can adjust to use this uh, as the way of, uh, of tracking the object. Now, in the gimbal video, it's actually only pointing down a fairly small amount, around uh, two degrees. So that, that changes things a little bit. Let me just flip this upside down and we'll see how that actually affects it. So here we've got a more shallow angle. You'd think it might make the problem a bit uh, simpler, but it actually makes it worse. You have to rotate a lot, almost instantly, with a small motion. But once you've gone past that angle, the amount of rotation that's needed isn't that much. Which means that you, when you get close to the center, if the angle is very shallow, and it's actually going to be a bit more shallow than this, then you're going to get a more sudden rotation as you cross the zero point, the straight ahead point. You see, when it's here, almost instantly with a small turn to the side of a few degrees, I'm already at nearly 45 degrees. When it's tracking over here at a shallow angle, it actually doesn't rotate very much. And this is something that we see in the gimbal video. We see when it starts out, it's, a, it's a quite, a, quite a large angle, and tracking left to right, there's very little if any visible rotation. When it gets in the middle though, it has to do these large corrections, because when you get to go the other direction, we need to flip all the way over. So you see from here to here, there's about a 90 degree correction. Now, the, this isn't the only mechanism that the camera has 
for adjusting the rotation. It also has some internal uh, finer grained stabilizers, uh, gimbal mechanism, mechanisms inside. So that will actually correct for the very small amount when you go from left to right over here. But when you get to over here in the middle, near zero zero degrees, it needs to do a much bigger correction, which is why we see this large sudden turn and then another turn, because it needs to go and start turning, turning the other way. So a big point about the gimbal video is that it's called the gimbal video. And I think the reason it's called the gimbal video is that it's demonstrating essentially artifacts of a gimbal camera system. This is a gimbal camera system. It's a gimbal just means uh, rotations, uh, rotating mechanisms within other rotating mechanisms. It's gimbal. This is essentially the same thing because we've got two axes of rotation. Uh, this, what we see here, is actually something called gimbal lock, which is a well-known problem with uh, uh, limited degrees of freedom. Uh, of, of camera systems and this is something that obviously the Navy would be aware of and perhaps they just called it this uh, this video gimbal because it's a video being used in training perhaps the name itself is a clue to exactly what's going on you wonder why no one thought of this before but uh, perhaps they have other explanations that they prefer